we've finally learned how to generate access tokens, connect our Shopify app to the database, and create the card stack to display our products. In the previous tutorial, we only taught you how to use the get method to display products, but we never actually created a way to update the products using the method put. That's why in this tutorial, we're going to continue working on the product API and use the method put to update the product's data like its name and the description. Stay tuned for that. Put. Hey, what's up, YouTube? My name is Bernard, and welcome back to another part of Advanced Shopify App Tutorial Series. Today, we'll continue working on the product API and update the products on form submit. Let's start by opening our products.php. First of all, let's just fix our select element and remove the options that we have created in the previous lesson. Now, what we want to put in this element is all of the collections in our store. Then we'll use the result from Ajax to highlight the option in the select element that matches with the current selection of the selected product. Let's do that. So right over here in the select element, create a new PHP tag and use two collection API like the smart and the custom to get all the collections from our store. And then we'll just loop through the response and create an option element for each collection. So basically this is the same process like in our Ajax.php. However, instead of pushing the data to an array, we'll just create an option tag and give it a value and a title. We also don't need to pass a set of data to our API call since we need all of the collections from our store. Okay, so we're not done here yet. Let's just open our index.php file and right over here in the JavaScript section, let's remove the append function since we don't really need that to add the collections once again. What we need to do is to loop through the options from our select element and check if each of the value of our option element matches with the collections of our selected product. So right over here, just above the for each of our JSON variable, type dollar sign and open parentheses and close parentheses and use the ID selector of product collection and add option just beside it. This will select all the option inside our select element with an ID of product collection. Next, we'll be using the each function so we can loop through each of the option element. So add a function and just give it a variable name of i, like it doesn't matter. And then inside of the loop, create a variable and name it option collection and give it a value from this selector and use the val function. In other words, for each loop, our option collection variable will have different values. So if we use the console.log and pass the value of option collection variable, we will see in the console that we have the following values. These values are from the option elements, which you can see right over here. Awesome, now that we have the values from our options, let's use them to compare them to the values of our JSON collection variable. So right below, type JSON and use the collection key and use the for each function with an uppercase E and then just give its variable name um, like product collection. And then just don't forget to close everything out. Next, inside of the for each loop, create an if statement that checks if the product collection ID is equal to the value of the option collection variable. Then, we'll set the attribute selected of the current option to selected. So right over here, we use the product collection ID selector, same as over here in our first loop, but we just have to specify which option by giving it a value right over here. That's why we need to concatenate the value of option collection to the selector. Okay, so if we save the scripts and test the app, you should see that there will be some highlighted options and those are the collections that our product is assigned to. And yeah, that's awesome. But if we select another product, the same highlighted option will still be highlighted and we don't want that. So go back to our index.php and just before we use the Ajax function, type the same selector for the product collection option and then use remove attribute, attribute collection, uh, no, re remove attribute function and press the value of selected. This will remove the selected attribute from all of the options inside of our select element. Now save the script and that should fix the bug in our select element. Awesome. All right, now that we're done fixing that, we can now proceed and update the products using the method put from product API. Let's start by making sure that our submit button is working. So right over here in the products.php, add an ID attribute for the save changes button and make sure the ID is set to save product, uh, uppercase S and uppercase P. 
Then just beside it, create a custom attribute and call it product ID with an empty string like so. All right, so save the script and this time open your ajax.php. All right, so right over here above the title variable, create a new variable and call it ID. Then give it a value from products variable and product and ID key. So it's a two dimensional array. All right, next, right over here at the bottom where we echo out and encode the array to JSON, add to the array a new key, which is ID, and give it a value from the ID variable. Now, save the script and go back to index.php and right over here in the JavaScript section, above the modal function, type the selector dollar sign and then save product and use attribute function and use the custom attribute we created and give it a value from JSON ID. Now, if we take a look at the app and select one product, we should see that our button gets a value for its attribute product ID. What we want to do next is to make sure that this button won't have a value as soon as we close the model. To do that, we'll have to use an event for modal. So go back to index.php file and just at the bottom of the script, type the selector for our modal, then use on function and apply hide.bs.modal. It's an event from Bootstrap. So if you want to check that out, you can check, uh, you can just search events for modal for Bootstrap. All right, so I'll continue. Create a function and inside, get the same product selector and use attribute function and set the value of product ID to an empty string. All right, so save the script and that should reset the value of the product ID from our button as soon as we close the model. Awesome. Now let's give our button some functionality. Just below the hide event for the model, type the selector for our save product and use on function and pass click event. Then inside the function, create a variable and name it product ID with, with an uppercase I and D. And then give it a value from this selector and use attribute function and pass the attribute product ID. Next, we'll also have to use Ajax for this. So we can just copy the above Ajax and just paste it right over here. First off, let's remove anything inside the success. Then we'll replace the value of the ID with product ID. And then for the URL, we could just create a new file, but we don't like that. We want to make sure that we create as few files as possible. So what we can do is to just add another variable over here in the data, which we'll call type and give it a string value of put. For the above Ajax, we'll do the same, create the variable right over here in the data and call it type then give it a string value of get. So what we're doing here is just we're for the get, we want to just get the, the product information, like the title, description, and its collection ID. And right over here in the method put, for the type put, what we want to do is to update the product. So we're just separating the process. All right, so enough of that. Let's change the data type instead of JSON. Let's just make it an HTML. All right, so let's save the script and let's go open our ajax.php once again. Okay, so just after we get the access token from the database, let's create a conditional statement which checks if the value of type is get or put. So just type if post variable with a key type is equal to get. Then we'll just copy everything underneath it and just put it inside like so. Okay, so after this condition, we'll make an else if statement for the put method. So just type over here, else if the variable post type is equal to put. Then we'll just test it by using echo and make a string that says updating products info. Also, don't forget to close that with semicolon. Okay, so let's save that and let's go back to index.php. Right over here in our second Ajax, inside the success function, Let's just use console.log to display the response. All right, so save the script and let's see if everything is working. And there you go, we have two responses from our two Ajax. The first one is for the modal and the second one is for updating the product's info. Awesome. All right, so let's proceed. Open the Ajax.php once again. Let's remove the echo over here. And then let's just copy the product API call that we did right over here in the get action. 
and we'll just paste it right over here inside the else if. Now we'll just change the action from get to put. Now the next thing that we need to do is to apply what data we want to change in the product API. So if you remember, we have three variables that we can apply to our API. First one is the title, the description, and lastly, the collection. So if we take a look at our Ajax in index.php, we still don't send those three variables. And so we pretty much can't update the product. So right over here in the data, we can either just serialize the form or just manually create three variables and apply them one by one into data. You can try either one of those, but we'll just serialize the form so it's much cleaner. All right, so before we do that, we need to add an ID to our form because I believe our form doesn't have any attribute. So let's go back to our products.php and add an ID to our form like so. Just give it a value of product form with an uppercase F to pay respect to the form. Next, we need to add the name attribute for each input, text area, and select element so that we can get their values. So let's just copy the ID in its value, then paste it beside it, and just change instead of ID, we'll change it to name. So we have an ID and name attribute with the same value. All right, so let's just do that to the input, text area, and select element. All right, so save the script and let's go back to index.php. Right over here in the data, just add a new variable just below the ID and call it product. And then give it a value by typing the form selector. Don't forget the dollar sign and then open and close parentheses. And then use the function serialize. So just check the spelling. Also, don't forget to add comma instead of semicolon. Don't use semicolon, use comma. All right, so let's save the script and let's try the app. All right, click the card and let's just change the value of title to test. The description, test description. And we'll leave the collection as is. Now, if we click the save changes, we should, we should see in the network tab that we have sent the following values. Awesome. Now it's time to update the product. Let's open our ajax.php file. Right before we call the Shopify call function, let's create a new array variable and call it product data. And then just after that, we'll have to use the parse string function because the form serialized function basically converted our variables into a URL parameter string. So we have to con convert it back into a variable in which our code can understand. So yeah, use parse string function. And for the first argument, use the post variable and the product key. So basically what happens here is the string inside the post product will be converted into an array and we'll pass that to the variable product data. All right, next, let's create a new variable and this time we'll name it just array. And then for its value, we'll create a new array and then create a key and name it product and give it a value by using a double arrow. You know what, to be honest, I don't even know what you call this thing. Apparently there's no name for this. So if you know, let me know the comments below. Okay, let's continue. After that, let's create a new array. So this will be two-dimensional array. Then here's where we add the data that we want to send. So first we have the title, then the body HTML, which, which is for the description. For the collections, we can't do it directly with product API because Shopify, for some reason, they don't want, they don't want that. <sighs> yeah. And lastly, make sure you apply the array over here in the function. And also make sure that the method is put, not get. All right, so for now, we can just save that and see if that actually updates the product. And oh, by the way, we can just actually just remove this JSON decode since we don't really need to get the response. Okay, so anyway, let's just save all of our codes and let's test the app. Okay, so for the title, I'll just type test. And for the description, I'll just type test description. Okay, so let's just save changes. Now, if we refresh the product, we should see its new name and description. And voila, we have finally updated its name and description. Now for the collection, it's a bit complicated since it can be assigned to one or more collections, right? And the problem is some collection can be smart collection. Some collection can be custom collection. 
or the manual collection. So the solution I'm thinking for this is to remove the products from all collections, then re-add them to the collections based on the value that we have on our product data variable. But you know what? I think I'll leave it right here. Today, we were able to fix the error in our select and we're able to update the title and the description of our products. And I think that's a progress for this series. <laughs> in the next video, I'll probably just create a small video or short video where we focus on the collection API, like how we can update the collection for the products and so on. Uh, so yeah, anyway, thank you guys for coming along and learning how to use the product API. We're not done here. Uh, I hope you are looking forward to the next part. So yeah, anyway, thank you guys for watching. And if you're not subscribed yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you all in the next video. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.